Hello viewers, we are back again with yet another episode of Two to Tango. And today we have a very pertinent question that we want to address. Something that a lot of people have reached out to us in the last few months and we've interacted with a lot of people. A question which says, how can we succeed in an industry which probably is vastly different from you know, your core industry that you were probably there post uh, pre-MBA uh, or you've suddenly uh, made a massive change in your industry, a new domain that you started working on and is not your comfort zone. So how do you succeed in such kind of an environment and what are the key things that we can look to address? Now, between me and Sapta, uh, our post MBA lives are about five to six years old now. And uh, you know there are a few things that we have done in our life. We have tried to innovate. We have tried to use different ways to be able to succeed. And uh, probably we've also thrived in uh, you know utilizing and implementing some uh, sort of uh, specific thought processes. And what we've thought is that with our experiences, we'll try to collate them and create some sort of a toolkit that might just be helpful for you uh, in case you are stuck in that particular area or you know looking to get a direction how you can succeed in that vastly different industry. So stay tuned and hopefully this is useful for you. So the question is, why is this relevant or, or pertinent now? I think MBA is, is an inflection point and, and you know, post your MBA, you would generally move to a different industry or, or do a role in, um, even if it's the same industry, you would probably do a very different role. And in situations like this, I mean, generally you are going to join at a very middle management level and you are expected to lead people who would have much more domain expertise than yours. And that in itself creates a lot of pressure to perform. On top of it, you know, you're coming out from a premier MBA college, you know, that that adds up to that pressure. And, you know, the initial days when, when you are not familiarized with the subject matter expertise, it's it's always like being in that hot waters. And, and you know, going through that journey, uh, we believe that it's very important that uh, we can share some of our experiences uh, with you such that it can become part of your uh, you know, kind of a directional flashboard that you can use like, okay, you know, these are the things that, that we can, or we, we need to look into if we have to be successful in our careers. So at any workplace or for that matter, at any place, it's all about perception management, right? It all determines how people look at you. And I think the first step that is that goes a long way in building the right perception is your courage to get your hands dirty, right? If you don't do not shy away from getting your hands dirty and doing the actual work, it can go a long way in building the right perception and right perception, not just for the people reporting into you, your team members, but also with the senior management where you report into and the broader stakeholders that you will have in the completely new industry that you've joined. And I think it's it's very important because if you even look at project management and the basic philosophy that comes is how do you break a bigger problem statement into smaller problem statements and solve it. So it's it's very important that you look at those smaller problem statements at the start because A, it it minimizes your risk as well. If you screw up, it's not the most complicated of the tasks that you are taking ahead for the organization and that that's fine. But then if you do it well, it gives you enormous amount of confidence to take up the complicated tasks in the future. Look at the amount of trust you are going to gain from your team and from your leadership because A, your team knows that, you know, here is a manager who is ready to roll up his sleeves and work with us. And the leadership knows that the person wants to get into the details. And then this is the path of least resistance for you to learn a completely new process in itself or a new domain in itself that you are not that aware of. So I think doing the small things right would help you create the template of future success. So step one, to be successful in a new role, you need to know or you have to have the passion of breaking down the smaller problem statement, identifying that and roll your sleeves and get your hands dirty. I think the second most important thing for you 
to stand out just like any product out there in a crowded market is a brand and remember you are a brand in yourself now when i talk about a brand i think i, I a lot of things come up to our head they were talking about sports car first thing that comes is ferrari if i talk about a ferrari first thing that comes is red color ferrari so so think about it it's as a consumer i can relate to that so how do you create a similar relation in the minds of your consumer about yourself so in very simple words a brand is an usp that you would like to create for yourself because of which there is a recall value so someone should be able to differentiate you because of that brand uh, if a senior management has to recall you they should be able to recall you through that brand that you have carefully created for yourself absolutely very valid point sapta and i think Uh, the 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 point that we need to understand here is that any sort of thought process where you kind of build your brand you know it could be it could range from anything it could be you know innovation it could be all about projects management uh, of things it could be about people aspect it could be about diversity community the range is very uh, you know broad but what is important is it has to be important for the organization so you build your brand in an area which is important to the organization and more importantly it should be important to your immediate senior management because that brings value right so your brand itself starts bringing value to the stakeholders to the management etc and i think what is important is that you need to be known in any of those areas as a solution provider and not as a problem seeker you should be able to go into a into your boss's cabin and say we have this problem this is the potential solution this is what i have thought of don't stop at the first sentence of saying this is the problem right and it could be on any of those brands uh, the the area the domains that we talked about of building your brand and i think while you're saying while you're talking about building your brand you could probably utilize a lot of those forums in which you are participating for example town halls you know large meetings team meetings it could be any place where you can provide probably ask the right questions probably assist in answering a lot of questions from the audience or from the management or the senior management stakeholders etc which will slowly slowly start building that recall value that sapta talked about wherein people would start associating you as a person to a particular thought process which is again as i say relevant to the industry or relevant to your people to your stakeholders to your management right and hence it is very very important while we started off with getting your hands dirty it needs to transcend into building a brand which has a relevant recall value for the firm and for the management and i'll just add one thing to it you know yes you have to create a brand but the brand has to be visible oh, yeah. so there's no point creating a brand if it is not visible so what what they mentioned if you if for example you are passionate about diversity you kind of got to talk about it in in any forum that you get you know even if it's a one to one forum people need to see you talking about that because if you talk about that that creates the halo of the brand around you so remember you are the brand and the the halo is what you create out of it so don't be shy away or don't shy away from talking about what you are passionate about what you are standing for and that's what would create a recall value for yourself so we talked about getting your hands dirty we talked about building your brand etc now once you have got a hang of doing all of those things it's very very you know easy for a lot of people to go it into their comfort zones step 3 that we want to tell you is do do not settle down too soon you need to keep expanding which means a couple of things that you need to keep in mind one you need to continuously build new skill sets now it could be anything it could be very soft skill sets personal skill sets it could be hard technical skill sets depending on the domain that you are working on in the area of expertise that you are uh, kind of excelling but you need to constantly learn and keep that learning curve up and up again another point is that while you are you learn you add that value that additional value that that is very very important 
you know, in discussions, in forums, in roles, responsibilities, wherever. The idea here is, and the bottom line is, that you need to constantly offer yourself for far more challenging roles, challenging assignments than you do currently. That is going to be a differentiating factor. And what does it actually mean, like offering yourself to challenging roles? I think, you know, your manager, they are, so imagine it's, it's a closed room with only so much space in it. And you can only expand when your manager starts expanding and, and doing new things. And the, and the space is there for, for her or him to experiment in doing new things. And you take the problems of today and make it your own. Always remember this, and, and this is like the mantra of most of the organizations is you only get promoted or you only get credited for doing something when you are already doing it. No one will kind of give you a promotion to say that, well, this is a completely new role. Can you please go ahead and do it? You, they need to see you performing at that level because the stakes of failure at, as you inch towards middle management or senior management level is pretty high. And hence, it's important that you don't settle. You keep expanding and you keep adding value. Like in all MBA colleges, value is like, like the most abused word. But then remember, anything that you touch on, if you're not adding value to it, that does not add your stamp. So people come to you when with a problem statement, when they know that you can add some value to that solution. Or they come to you with a, a completely new strategy deck when they know that they you can add some value in the thought process of how it can work for the organization. And you can only do that if you build your skill sets and continue doing that. So just as Dave said, you know, do not settle, keep learning, take up challenging roles, free up, free up your manager's bandwidth, because once you do that, they can think about your career. So it actually works in your benefit. And, you know, at the end of it, keep expanding. Now, if you look at the three first three steps that we have told you, right? We talked about, you know, how you've built a brand. You, we talked about, you don't settle down. You, we've talked about, uh, you know, uh, getting our hands dirty, etc. If you follow these, you are right there. You know, now people probably know you. People add a certain brand to, your, uh, to, to yourself. You're already working. You're challenging yourself. You are out there. Now, the most important thing that is there that will trump all of this and will be the step four is all about sponsorship. Before we come to the sponsorship, remember one thing, while sponsorship is the larger umbrella, the it's, it's based on the most key thing, which is the foundation is your work, your work and your work ethics make the foundation of anything. If that is not solid, nothing really works beyond that. Right? Once you have sorted out that particular aspect about your work, your skills, right? What is important is the extent of your visibility, you know, and the extent of visibility means, are you only siloed in your work with your only your domain division team, etc., or do you have the visibility and talking terms with people beyond that? And it could be technology. It could be HR. It could be other domains which have some influence on the work that you do. The idea is, do you create siloed solutions or do you create a more holistic experience for your firm or for that matter, for your clients, right? This is the most important thing. And once you get the right visibility, it translates into the right networking. You obviously interface with people across different domains. People start knowing you. And you start knowing what is important for not just your manager, but your stakeholder list kind of transcends across the firm, which is one of the very important things that builds on the foundation of a good working person. And I think that's, that's a very good point. Uh, imagine why an MBA is so much valued because in a classroom, you are working with people, 80, 100 or people, from different industries and within a span of one year, you are learning about so many different industries and any problem that you are trying to solve, you are trying to solve through the lenses of so many different industries. That exactly happens when you network. 
so you are not solving a problem from your siloed view you are adding value the, the whole value concept that we spoke at the at the start you are trying to add value to a solution by bringing in different perspectives and when you go to your senior management presenting a solution it's a very well rounded solution which has got a buy in from multiple stakeholders and that talks about a maturity in an organization which helps you to get to do much more networking and helps you to get sponsorship not only from a single silo but sponsorship across the board and that's very important how holistic your sponsorship is and once once that happens i think the next part is beyond your work you remember we spoke about brand so beyond your work what are you known for so you need to be a very good corporate citizen and that's extremely true in today's day and world where besides your work you also need to be standing out for something again it's very important that you you have to be passionate you know you can't you can't stand out if you're not really passionate about it but then there are multiple things in an organization whether you know it's uh, through you know whether whether it's diversity and inclusion you are passionate about whether it's lgbt you are passionate about whether it's uh, women leadership you are passionate about whether it's technology whether it's uh, you know creating a community for low code solutions or uh, analytics etc etc you have to be a good corporate citizen that showcases your leadership beyond your work now what happens generally is as soon as you do that you are suddenly exposed to a much broader set of stakeholders who you won't generally connect in your normal course of work so imagine at a very senior level when people talk about you there there are different voices that come not only from your silo but from silos related to you and then from silos unrelated to you at all which creates a very holistic perception about you the fourth pillar which is which is also very important to get sponsorship is mentorship and while you know you don't really tie these two things together i think what what mentorship does really is in your initial days or or even in a future days it helps you navigate to the organization so every time you face a difficult problem you have someone to kind of go back and really check whether you know this is what it is you know this is what I, the feedback i got what does it mean etc etc now once you gain the trust of your uh, you know mentor once a mentor feels that you know he or she is adding a, a lot of value you start building a relationship over a period in time and who knows some of this relationship would or might also culminate to sponsorship so i think the the eventual view is at at a corporate level you if you have to succeed you need to have strong and and really strong sponsorship and if you have to go there the four things that that can make it happen your work no doubt that's foundation of it uh, the sec second thing is your networking in your silo outside your silo standing as a good corporate citizen and fourthly mentorship so what we have tried to do in the last uh, 10 15 minutes is to not just not create a prescription but create a toolkit a toolkit that you can probably refer to and see how it will be beneficial for you while you navigate your industry your domain and your divisions to repeat step 1 is all about get your hands dirty step 2 is all about building your brand step 3 is not settling down in your comfort zone but constantly expanding and step 4 the final umbrella is all about sponsorship so hope this toolkit these four simple steps can help you navigate your firm and help you in your career progression in your area domain expertise whatever you want to call it so best of luck guys you know do keep motivating us if you have enjoyed this video if it has added value to you to like this video share it with your peers and do subscribe to your channel this is dev and this is sapta and we are two to, two to tango, tango.